All right, good evening and welcome to Football in Vivo on Club Deportes Season 2, Episode 11. We air every week on clubdeportes.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Football Austin. That's F-U-T-B-O-L Austin. Follow Club Deportes at Club Deportes. For all the latest and greatest sports news and commentary, well, you have to visit the only website that believed in Emiliano Ragoni all along. That's clubdeportes.com. I am your host, Eric McCoy, and I am joined by a man disappointed he didn't get to see a Rodney Redis goal on Saturday night, but thrilled he got to see a Rodney Redis assist. It's Jorge Chavez. Yeah, I'm going to eat some crow today, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm happy to see the result. Absolutely. Now, now we don't have David Alvarez with us this week. He is off at the Verde store buying every Emiliano Ragoni that they have in stock, every Emiliano Ragoni jersey that, that is available at the Verde store. Yeah. David Alvarez is purchasing that right now. But what we do have is an extra special guest, Adam Ribic of Capital City Soccer. The Ribbonator, as you may know on Twitter, is joining us tonight. How's it going, Adam? It's going great. It's going great. Happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to have you. So let's uh, let's go ahead and start off with a few questions. Just kind of introduce yourself to our audience. So you, you write for Capital City Soccer. You do not own Capital City Soccer, no. as was made clear before we yeah. before we started here. No. Uh, how did you get started with the, with Capital City Soccer? Uh, the guy who runs Capital City Soccer, Troy Bryant, shout out. Um, he's a pretty uh, generous, kind soul who. Uh, uh, just put out kind of a casting call on Twitter asking for more writers to join. They got It's kind of a collective. It's got kind of a, a semi-consistent uh, stable of writers that, that um, cover everything from the food scene to um, one of Talking my Talking my language there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, for casual fans, uh, like um, keeps a tracker of like uh, players' injuries, players' salaries, just like kind of random trivia, stuff like that. Um, then, like, deep statistical analysis, you might have heard of um, Los Verdes and Nerd. Ner I, lo I love the stuff yes. they do. They do some great yeah. stuff. They do some good stuff, yeah. And uh, I'm still trying to kind of find my rhythm, but uh, one of the things I've been doing lately that I really love is um, trying to – you see on the website they got up there, there's that little thing that says the culture. The culture. That didn't exist before me. Right, I, I I forced Troy's Wait. hand. Um, so are you kind of like because Matthew McConaughey, right? He's the minister of culture minister. for oh. Austin. <laughs> are you the minister of culture for, for Capital City Soccer? Is that, is that can we say that? I'm the deacon. No, the, the deacon. deacon. Oh, wow, wow. Deep, deep like religious that. cuts here. Uh, <laughs> no, and uh, yeah, so um, I've I've been uh, really enjoying lately. I've written a couple of Capo corners. Okay, um, and uh, and then just. This past week, I debuted a new series that I'm launching called uh, Meet La Morga. Um, I saw that, yeah. And uh, got to uh, interview an amazing guy, um, Ralph Fulton Jr. Um, no, uh, I good guy. Didn't even realize it when I wrote it that it was going to be um, it was going to be uh, Willie Nelson's 90th birthday this it, past Saturday. It was it very was. nice. Tifa I from the Tifa. complete coincidence. I said, uh, when you talk to Ralph, you get Willie Nelson esque vibes. Of, you do of soccer, yeah, actually. Okay. You do, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, he, it was just a, a joy to get to talk to him and super inspiring. Um, and I'm looking forward to just seeing who else uh, who else comes into my path um, by kind of putting that out there. There's um, there's a lot of people that that, are, that you'll come across, believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I know my own soccer journey. It, it didn't just kind of like one day I'm like, I'm going to go be a soccer fan. It, there was a journey that kind of that happened, and uh, I love hearing those stories. And, and so um, it's kind of an honor and a privilege that people will let me kind of unearth their story and, and uh, bring it bring it up. So is that me. kind of the angle you like, just like talking to, to different people within the Austin FC community, kind of hearing their stories and then telling those stories with, with your writing on, on Capital City Soccer? I mean, on a broader level, I got to give credit to my mother because um, Mother Day is coming up. Uh, oh, you know. Shout out, Mom. Shout yeah, out moms. and uh, she just always loved trying to figure out what made people tick. And uh, I've always just enjoyed uh, hearing people's stories and finding out um, what's going on there. So um, I have uh, been poking Austin FC to say, hey, let me talk to the players and, and share hey, their stories. Believe me, we've tried it. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough, <laughs> that's a tough uh, sell there. Yeah, it's a very tough sell. Until that day, that, that fine, sweet, beautiful day comes when uh, the folks at the Austin FC comms department let me talk to a player. Oh. 
Um, I will just talk to anybody else uh, who all, wants all, to share all, their story. All, all Austin FC comes can do is say no. <laughs> Until that one wonderful they, day that they say yes, then <laughs> sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, hey, if, if you haven't checked out Capital City Soccer, what are you doing? you got to check out Capital City Soccer. It's an excellent, re- excellent resource. I know when I first started covering um, Austin FC, like literally before the roster was even complete, and I was doing my blog, we were hosting a show on, on Co-op Radio, I mean, my thing was just, let, let's check out Capital City Soccer. That's where I found all my information. It made me sound a lot smarter than I actually am. So. Yeah, they, they do. They, they've, they're they pretty well known for a lot of research, a lot of analysis. Yes, yes, uh, indeed. I follow them religiously, in, if, in a sense, just to get a little vibe of, what, of what's going on in Austin FC from a different source. And the really cool thing is, I, I imagine from Troy's perspective, you know, he's been just slowly um, grinding and consistently um, staying on point. He live tweets almost every single match. Yeah, definitely during matches. Um, Cavs yeah. Soccer is a great follow. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're fun. The, the commentary, the analysis, spot on. He's all over um, Instagram and TikTok. Um, he's he's on it, man. And, um, and so there's something for everybody on there, whether you're just a casual fan or whether you really want to, like, nerd out. Um, it's, it's all there. Um, so, and, and uh, April, we, we celebrated another... Um, uh, kind of another milestone achievement mm-hmm. where we got ten thousand uh, readers on the just on the website itself. Wow! Um, so can so. you guarantee we'll get ten thousand people watching this uh, <laughs> this video? Then Adam, can you can you go ahead and bring some of those people over to football and vivo here? That was over the test. course of the month. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Okay. All right. okay. Okay. Gotcha. So I should lower my expectations yeah, of this. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry, man. All right. Well, hey, we're we're really happy to have you here, Adam. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little Austin FC. Let's yeah, do you, it. You seem like the guy that, that we can talk a little Austin FC with. Um, so the drought's over. Austin FC have scored. They scored not once, twice. but twice. Hallelujah. Yeah. Emiliano Ragoni <laughs> scored I, a goal against of all, all, of all the games I've missed in all, for Austin <laughs> FC home games. I, am, I had to miss this one. Let me tell you, Jorge, I am saving my press pass from this game. I'm going to frame oh, yeah, it. Absolutely. That's a collector's sure. item, man. Oh, yeah. The, the, very first, the very first Emiliano Ragoni goal, assisted by... Or Rodney Redis. One Rodney Redis. You know, I, I, I've, he's been looking good. And I think we talked about a little, a little bit before the, before the game. He's looked good in the minutes he's been given. I, I agree. So I think he earned this start. And he played very, very well throughout the game. I think, I think he was outstanding throughout the game. For me, I think he was, was the man of the match. I, I thought he was, was the key to everything that Adam seems to disagree with me. Now, it's usually... Him and I usually agree, and the guy that usually sits in that chair, he says all kinds of crazy <laughs> things, just all kinds of off the wall. What made you, you all kind of talk. What made you think I just? <laughs> I, I, I can sense it, man. And I, I guess I'm just used to the person in this chair yeah, disagreeing with disagreeing me. With it's with it. just how how I always say, uh, yeah. That's just kind of what usually ends up happening. So, uh, who was your man of the match then, then, Adam? Who was my man of the match? Oof, I don't know. I got I got probably Danny Pereira. Okay, that that's fair. That's yeah. a fair shout. That's yeah. a fair shout. Even with the the giveaway on the on the second goal, mm-hmm. I thought um, everything else from him tonight was solid. It was just it was really really solid. So yeah, I, Danny Pereira for me, he and John Gallagher have been, have been the two bright spots on this team this season. The two most consistently positive things yeah. that we've seen from Austin FC and Stuver, but that's and so yeah, Stuver kind of yeah. Yeah. Now the guy that sits in that he, chair, he, 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 he usually he, doesn't like Brad Stuver. He, he, that's what that's the he kind hates of, him. He hates him playing with his feet. Let's just kind of <laughs> zero in on that. But that's, that's on the coach. That's not on Brad. There yeah, you, you go. You see, got plenty of about the coach. <laughs> yeah, go with that. Now, okay, so we we're, we're happy. We're we're talking a lot of positives here because Austin FC finally scored. They scored two goals, but of course, it wasn't all positive because they did concede two goals, and so that is two more points dropped at home. A 2-2 draw was the final at Q, Q2 on Saturday night. Um, let's start by maybe discussing the, the starting 11, because I think there were some interesting things. Yeah. Um, if we can go ahead and get that. There you go. There's uh, the crowd. Look at that. That's uh, Rigoni and Redis, and Redis down there. Yeah. Look at that. And somewhere down there is Jorge Iturralde and, and, and David <laughs> Alvarez right there, because that's usually where they stand. Yeah. <laughs> um, can, we, can we get the uh, the starting 11? There's the standing, still 11th place, still not, not pretty good. Okay, there we go, starting 11. Um, anything jump out to you here? There's a few changes. Uh, Johan Valencia, he's made an appearance here. 
Uh, Roddy Redes, as, as we've discussed, started. Uh, Adam Lundquist, I think that was his, his first start in the uh, in MLS play. Um, what, what jumps out to you here? We'll start with you, Adam. What jumps out to you with this uh, the starting 11 here? I'm kind of happy that Coach Wolf didn't trigger my asterisks. Um, <laughs> let me explain oh, okay. that. I um, kind of broke character after the, LA, uh, the Los Angeles Galaxy game. I uh, was pissed. I okay. was hotter than fish grease. And I went on publicly, said some things I probably shouldn't have on uh, We Are Austin TV's uh, Twitter space afterwards. Oh, okay, I, but that's a lively conversation. It is. It is. And I got, I got, I got hot. And, I got hot, and, all those guys, and yeah. I said, look, I have never been wolf out. I said, and I'm still not wolf out with the asterisks that <laughs> if Owen Wolf starts the next game, I will change my tune because there needed to be some accountability for Owen Wolf's just deadly giveaway um, in the second half of the game versus the Galaxy. It was a pretty yeah. okay. catastrophic bad. calamity there. Um, pretty bad. Wolf yep. earned some respect points from me by um, by holding his son accountable. Benching his own flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's my main uh, high-level thing that I wanted to say about the starting 11. Okay, um, well, you're, you're on Club Deportes here, Adam. Yeah. See, this is, you you got to be fired up if you're on Club Deportes. Okay. We, we want hot takes. <laughs> okay. only, only the hottest, spiciest takes you got are, are going to work here. I try to be measured, and I try to see the good well, that's a, you know, no. No, 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 not measured that, here, that's man. That's kind we of my job. You, buddy. Shooting from the hip. <laughs> you want you <laughs> shooting from the hip, man. You want another interesting thing. Okay, what do you got? Um, Adam Lundquist. Uh, yes. His, his uh-huh. first start after what I like to call the debacle in the Dominican. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. I like that. That was his last start for Austin FC. We all know Mm -hmm. how um, absolutely atrocious that was. That did not go well. And um, this, uh, his second start for the team, um, only lasted 45 minutes. (laughs) So So, he didn't didn't impress me very much in this game. I don't know if I want to see him Didn't impress you? He, I mean, if I'm a neutral or I'm a San Jose fan, I'm like clamoring for a red card after that atrocious tackle in the fifth minute of the game. Like it was scary. I don't know. Like if the it was, if yeah. the ref was sneezing at that point or what the heck he was doing, I but don't know. I mean, I might have been sitting in the tweet. I don't. I don't, no, I don't really remember this. He so. cleared out both of his legs in the box. Uh, yeah, it, it was. Okay. I mean, I I see through verde colored lenses like the rest of us <laughs> here at this table, but that one was objectively like a, a, a huge missed call. Um, and so he was already. Uh, if I'm Wolf. He's on my hot seat. He's on my uh, bleep mm. list, you know, um, uh, right out of the gate there. We're a family show. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, people sit there I don't want to give, I don't I don't create any extra work for Jerry over yeah, there. No, no, no. He's having he's to he's bleep he's me in post-production <laughs> and all that <laughs> stuff. So. Now, I, when we were on co-op, I used to, have to do a lot of editing. Yeah, we, we, we would record the, the, before yeah. the show, and I have to go in, and I did. I was always... The, yeah. The guy usually sits there was was keeping me busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very busy. Um, yeah, so um, so that was that was a mess. Um, and then you know he just got burned bad uh-huh. on the on the first goal by San Jose. Well, I think the whole team uh, or a lot of players got burned pretty bad on on that goal. Um, yeah, we we might get to I see mean, some analysis. I, th- a little yeah, I think later, when we see the yeah. highlight, uh, the low light of that, <laughs> yeah, um, low light. Good, it, good it, word. It, there's plenty of blame to go around on that one, but. Um, Lundquist didn't look good. Yeah, I, I 100% and agree. I, I hey. would not be surprised if someone had asked Coach specifically, like, how come you only uh, ran uh, Lundquist out there for, for 45 minutes if you wanted to be like, um. Yeah, nobody asked that, which is yeah. kind of Yeah, odd, well, yeah, I only, only got the one question in yeah. it, so I, I did not elect like to use that question on Adam Lundquist. It's, 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 <laughs> if we had, like, a wolf sub-tracker out there, maybe that's a new <laughs> thing that uh, – those narratives Verdes want to put out on CapitalCity.com, right. uh, CapitalCitySoccer.com. Um, I, I think it'd be really rare, to, um, Wolf, having halftime substitutions. Usually, I feel like usually I'm... You're right. You're actually really mad. You, usually it's 16 very minutes, rare. Right? Usually when the yeah. first subs start coming Later, in. usually I'm clamoring at like the 70th minute. Like, Wolf, when are you going to make a 60, damn change? Five minutes, 66 minutes. Yeah, it usually yeah. does not make one at, at the half. That, not, is, yeah. that is correct, yeah. Yeah, but, but Lindquist was, was a little bit of a mess, but uh, I think... What, what stood out to me is kind of similar to what, what you had said. We had always wanted Wolf to not start. Mm-hmm. All respect to Owen Wolf, you, you know, under 20, under 17, that's great. But you usually when you play at those kinds of tournaments, it's very different when you play in and out against bigger guys, faster Adults, guys. Not, adults. you're not against kids anymore. So 
you know, with all respect to Wolf, he really shouldn't be starting yet. Mm-hmm. He should be in a substitute, maybe. So I was when they when it came out, I was happy to see Valencia, and then I was sad to see. Valencia. <laughs> yeah, Valencia unfortunately <laughs> he, did not do did a whole lot to to submit a, a, his own spot in this in this starting eleven. Yeah, so. so so normally I would say yeah. In theory, everything you said about uh, Wolfito, uh, the Teen, Teen Wolf, Teen Wolf, Lobito, whatever you want to call him, yeah. um, is, is pretty. Lobito for the Spanish. It's yeah. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty accurate, but not specific to the San Jose game because I went back and looked at it, and I'm like, okay, he comes in and went like the, uh, I want to say like the 70 second minute, right? right? There was that yes. long yes, uh, yes, little yes. kind of injury break. And uh, he came on. He came on. And came on. Seventy second minute. Um, I just watched the game, so uh, <laughs> my, my memory is not, not that good. Um, and, uh, and 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 I'm like, okay, it, what I want to see in a 70th minute sub, or mm-hmm. even like a 65th minute sub, is a game changer. Someone who yeah, makes an, impact, make an yeah. impact. The super yeah. sub, you know, quote unquote. Um, well, you know, Valencia is not really generating anything offensively no no at that point so uh, i get like valencia besides his screw up on the first goal i thought he did some good disruption hit some good interceptions um but in terms of like uh, a, a ball that could unlock the opposing defense um shout out to ralph fulton and again he says we got to get him goofy footed um <laughs> I, I, guess like that's, that. I guess that's I something like they used that. to say back in yeah. the 70s when he was growing up oh wow. um but you know, the only guy in the midfield that I've seen make those passes that get some goofy footed has been uh, Sofian Jafal, who couldn't play because he was injured. Mm-hmm. Um, Pereira makes those. Glad to pass- hear you're a fellow member of the Jafal hot. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, I I thought well. that was just Jorge and I just yeah. on no, an no, island no. We, to ourselves. But it's good to, to hear that. that yeah. Well, in fairness, besides Pereira, who's making those passes that's that's trying to break lines <laughs> and get guys in behind? Get I, the, it's not happening, man. Get it's the opposing happening. team no running at their own goal. Yeah. Yeah. Goofy yeah. footed, yeah. right? It's not happening. And so Jafal isn't like world class at that, but he's the best I've seen in a Verde shirt this year. Um, I, I, I besides Pereira, sorry. I, I think I think you're onto something there, Adam. Now I want to ask you, Jorge. Wait, I got I got to go back. Sorry, I'm sorry. Well, what do you got? What do okay. you got? So Wolfito comes in, 72nd oh, yeah, minute. Okay. We were, yeah. All of his passes were lateral or backwards, which has been one of my big beefs with Team Wolf all year. Mm-hmm. It's just it's, it's been an issue with, with the, the team as a whole, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, specifically that that, that starts in midfield and, and, and Wolfito well, like, has been you're a You're coming big in seventy second minute, right? And at that point, um, it's still tied one one. Mm-hmm. But uh, about three minutes after that sub we go down um, the second goal, which was not Wolf's, uh, no, uh, Team Wolf's fault. Yeah, um, we'll go into whose fault that was in a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he didn't um, generate any offense, which is what the game demanded at that point in the game, is, mm-hmm. is, an, aw- uh, is an offensive threat. Um, so I'm like, so here's if, if I'm Wolf for a day, Big Wolf. Wow. Right? At that point, Quite a day there. you don't bring in uh, the guy who hasn't generated a lot of. Uh, uh, I mean, we're not asking him to come on and play striker, but at, if he's playing center mid, going forward at least. center mid, yeah. he's going forward, not backwards passes, not lateral passes. Bring some verticality. So yeah. what I would like to see, you got uh, the new guy Rado, you got Cascante, who I guess is healthy enough to sit on the bench, right? Should be well, healthy enough to play, right? Right. Put one of those guys in for Rigoni, who. Look, starting to look pretty gassed and a little bit out of ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Valencia. Uh, Valencia was kind of wasting space at that kind point. Kind of pedestrian <laughs> yeah. a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah. But put him in for one of those guys, and that lets you bring Ring up into the Absolutely. center of the park. Absolutely. Um, always. Who is always going to be more dangerous than anything I've seen out of uh, Teen Wolf this year, aside from his goal against uh, RSL. Yeah. And that was a golazo, by the way. But it was. But you can't really generate. Uh, you can't expect that every single game. No. That's like one in every ten games that, that he can take a shot like yeah, that. Yeah, if he's in. it's another goal like that this season, I'm going to eat this microphone. Yeah, because I don't. It's not it, happening. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I'll do. It was great, great goal. Oh but yeah, it's yeah not, wonderful he's not goal. There's one. nothing to take away from it, but but that's not his job. His job is to generate the offense, go forward, pass. Mm-hmm. Assist, whatever it needs. To be. If he's in the right place at the right time, great. But he didn't do that this game. Like you said, like you just, uh, like you just mentioned, 
He was passing backwards. That's, 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 that's not gonna. That's not gonna cut it. That's not gonna give you. When you're trying impact. to get a goal, you, yeah, you know, yeah, when you're going you don't, the opposite and, direction of the goal, right? And so I wonder if it's a confidence issue because the last time he did I have a forward know. pass, I don't. You know. remember when the last time it was he had a forward pass versus the Galaxy in the previous <laughs> yeah. game, did not, which did is not the pass that well. got him benched. <laughs> <blocked. laughs> yeah. Did not. Did not work out well for him. Hey, yeah. some some of these things get in people's in players' heads. They really do. I, yeah. And so you you're only good as there a last he is. play. And so there's the kid. We'll we'll see what happens, but but I think he just needs a little bit more coaching. Uh, he's got the ability. He just needs to be basically told when you are substituted, go forward, move the uh, the defense forward, you know towards towards your goal, but not back up. Yeah, that's just not going to cut it. Absolutely. Now, just in uh, before we get to the highlights, we'll get to the highlights in just a second here. But uh, before we get to that, did you have any thoughts on that that starting eleven? Anything jump out to you, Jorge? Other than, than probably Uruti, I, I don't know if Zardes has lost the coach's yeah, confidence, I, I'm, but he hasn't started. Yeah, I just I don't understand that. I, I uh, we've said it many times before. Uruti is more of a he's more of the impact player since his brace against LAFC back in August, the, the home match at Q two. He scored once, one goal, and yeah. he's had a lot of opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> he's started a lot and of games, so played you can't, a lot of minutes. Can't, so you can't say once. that Zardes is is doing any better, of course. Can't but, say he's doing any worse. But he's not doing any worse. <laughs> no. So, you know, they're just two, two different types of players. So I think he'll – we've gone back and forth with this before. I think he'll play better with Ethan Finley there. And forced, forced to be there, obviously, because of the injuries. Mm -hmm. But I think they should keep experimenting and see what Zardes can bring with an Ethan Finley next to him. Well, just – I mean, just – it's not working with the Rudy. Like, one shot in this game. That's, yeah. that's all he took. As your center forward in a game like this, but Zardes can he can't do any worse than that, right? He can't like he probably his, can. And his shot wasn't a high percentage shot. It no, was, it no, was not from the wing. no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, was kind of there. Low XG chance, I think, yeah. is, what, is what the Los Nerdes Verdes would say. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the uh, the highlights here, Jerry, if we can. Uh, be a lot, a lot of action in this game, so we should have a lot of stuff. It, it was have. a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, it was wasn't a, fun, a lot of fun to watch. Fun so it wasn't it wasn't a drab game. It was very exciting. So. Yeah. Look, look, Austin FC, they gave him a goal right at the, the kickoff there. Yeah. And then oh, the, this is the is. first. This, this is going to be the red card. I yeah. That, right, the, yeah. He freaking leveled he, him. He, 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 got, he, he got lucky that it wasn't called that way, the, the way it should have been called. There's a lot of non-calls in this game. He was, I don't he know was, if he was letting him play. Yeah, but got very chippy at the end in particular. No, but even yeah. at the beginning, Redis got kicked in the face by Yo, uh, yeah. By yeah, uh, was, Kate Cowell. Yeah. And Kate Cowell, you know, he, he's also one of those guys that that's you just got called up for the men's national mm -hmm. team for this this month this month's camp. So he's probably good in good in good shape. Ebobise is in good shape. Oh yeah, Ebobise is uh, very good. Very he's good he's also a uh, international type player, mm -hmm. so they have they have good pieces there. So much ball watching on this goal just pissed yeah. me off. It, it was not, yeah, this, not good enough. And and if we see Valencia there, he didn't really like. He was a statue, basically. <laughs> yeah. he we just were talking stood about there. national team Jackson Ewell a couple years back. Yeah, was, Jackson yeah, Ewell. Was, That's was, right. Uh, um, got international appearances for the U.S. So, I think it's a pretty good San Jose team. It they, is, they, really they, is. They actually, they really, it is. really the first is. half in yeah. particular, they were really impressive. But then the goal. Uh, this 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 was impressive. Look at that. In the sense there that, it is. That it was pointed out before Uruti's positioning. He could have gone forward, but he decided to stay back. Probably made the defenders think a little bit of why he did that, and that opened up for Rogoni. And now, uh, I didn't really care for the celebration too much, <laughs> but um, what, what, what did you like about the celebration? For that me, he celebrated. <laughs> for one, <laughs> for me, for me, <laughs> the, 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 little humility considering little just humility. now finally the no. sub the subtext the caption for the for the goal celebration felt like how you like me now. And <laughs> dude, it felt a little too soon. It, 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 <laughs> exactly, too soon to exactly be going how you like right. Me now. Yeah, it's a dude. Relax. This is your first goal, go on. ever for MLS. Just wait until the third or fourth goal <laughs> before you, you start talking with trash. Start talking yeah. trash. Sure. Let me but tell you something. Now, in, 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 the, in the post match uh, like uh, press conference, there, this yeah. is not a guy that's short on confidence. Oh no, going. absolutely he not. Really is we not. can see that from last year. Yeah, he was he was ready to go against LAFC. Man, this and he wasn't even goal. in practice yet. 
he was so pissed at himself because when you look at it from the overhead, the Nick Lima goal, the Nick Lima shot, mm-hmm. the goalie was way out of position. If he had just put it in a corner, he just, yeah, yeah. just yeah, the yeah, corners were open. He, the goalie was not going to reach those corners. Yeah, but he this, put it this, more this play the, here, you know, um, they just left the defender alone. All right, now here's what uh, I, left left the out, San Jose player alone. So Danny Pereira had the bad pass, mm-hmm. but yep. um, Nick Lima um, fails to jump to challenge the header. Or Mark Abobasi. So like, look at all that. Look his at all that space. Right there. But earlier in the buildup, um, Vicenin makes this choice to not close down the wing and concede possession on the wing and run back towards the near post. But he doesn't really serve a purpose in the near post either. He's just mm. kind of in no man's land. Yeah, he's kind of caught off. off I mentioned that because bit. the goal that we just saw was... Uh, finished off by Driussi, but who created it was Lima and Vicenin. So in my mind, they atoned for um, how bad they screwed up on the goal three minutes earlier. Yeah, I, I like that. That is an excellent way to look at that, Adam. Yeah. Uh, the only one who didn't really get to atone for his goof up was Pereira, but um, well, he, in my the first mind, goal the, though he was a big part of that first. That's goal, true. So. The whole rest of the game he was kind atonement of his atonement in advance. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> advance atonement. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of, uh, I, mean, I could see that. But but then after that it was just kind of back and forth and oh this one pisses this me one off. this one was yeah oh this, this is the Rigoni we know and love this right here is there the we Rigoni go we love. <laughs> instead of curving out it should have curved just a in. near post pass to Zardes might have been the yeah, game winner exactly. right there yeah and so all right so here's another one where Lima got out jumped and he was in better position this time. I'm like does Lima not know how to defend incoming crosses? It, yeah he. Well, we saw that when he played center back in that Violette disaster. Yeah. <laughs> he was not, it's not good the, in the air. The debacle in the Dominican. The, the debacle in the Dominican. The Trademark. Yes. No, okay. You can use it. You can use it. <laughs> yeah, so. so. Oh, if you're speaking Spanish, desastre in desastre the Dominicana. Desastre in the Dominicana. I like, yeah. I like the sound I like that. Of that one. So, I want to get you guys' take on this. So, I, I think th- this is the, the third straight draw SNFC I've had at home. And I, I think the... The one against Colorado and the draw against Vancouver, the, the vibe was really negative. Like that very much felt like two points lost. Yeah. I mean, you still at home, you really need to be getting three points. But I, I still I actually take a lot of positives I from do. this, this yeah. game. Like how do you guys feel about it? Are you, are you more happy for like the team scoring goals and you know, scoring goals? I mean, it just we hadn't seen You're that in right. a while. Are you happy about that or are you more frustrated again that, that they dropped two points at home? Uh well, I mean, uh, obviously it's a mixed bag, but I'm happy that they scored two goals. I'm happy that that they did not give up because after going one down and then two one down, they could have given up. They and they and for for everything that's gone bad for this team, they don't give up. They just keep going and going and going. And so I was happy that what they were able to die, but but it is two points lost, and they they could have even jumped it back into. Playoff position had they won, but again, this is a very good San Jose Quakes team. They, they I was really impressed. The front three, I think, were, were really excellent, and the, the midfield three were, were really good as well for for San Jose. The, the first forty minutes, so basically everything up until the Ragoni goal, Austin FC were being really outplayed. I mean, yeah. San Jose kind of dominated the, the early stretches of this game, and it wasn't until the Ragoni goal in the second half that Austin FC kind of really grew into the game. And ultimately, if you look at the numbers. I got him right here. Um, you know, Austin FC outshot San Jose 16 to 11. The XG was 2.17 for Austin FC, just one for San Jose. So this was uh, one of Austin FC's better performances overall. And when you kind of look at those those stats there, how, how did you see it, Adam? Are you are you pleased with this performance, or or does it still leave a lot to be desired for you? Well, um, as a fan, if I put my fan hat on, when hey, I'm, where you at? Fan hat. When fan I'm, hat, man. When mm-hmm. I'm sitting in my seats in the 107, come say hi. Um, I, all I really want, win, lose, or draw, is I want those green lights to come on, and I want to be able to give high fives to a bunch of complete strangers. You want that catharsis yeah. of a yeah. goal, right? Um, and, um, and I share my seats with, uh, mi hermana, mi cuata, mi, am, mi amiga, mi, uh, Leza, and she was bringing her little daughter to her first ever Austin FC game. Um, shout out to Maya. And, um, the cutest video on her Facebook stories uh, this week of Maya just jumping with glee in the green, basking in the glow oh, of the green lights. Oh, nice. So uh, on that level, mission accomplished. They scored at home. Like, if you don't score at home, like, you just the, – uh, those opportunities for those lifelong memories just mm-hmm. get completely missed. Um, well said. 
on another hand, put my analysis hat on. Your objective <laughs> hat on. Um, okay. This was the first game that felt like 2022 Austin FC for me. Um, you remember we were the comeback kids last year. We would yes. go down, yes. Yes. and it, and you never quite felt like you were out of it. You know, especially mm-hmm. after the DC game where we came back with like three goals in the last ten minutes. Yes. Right. Yes. At that point, you started believing anything's possible. Right. Mm-hmm. Up until this game, there were just game after game where I'm like, did we lose that edge? You know, I even asked Coach Wolf last Thursday at at the training center. I was like. Are we missing that vibes guy this year? Is is this a, a lack of Felipe, a lack of Ruben kind of situation? And I was we discussed that on, on the um, show. Yeah. And he didn't quite like say, yeah, you're right, Adam. But he was kind of like, we do need to kind of like punch up the intensity even more than it is already. Uh, which, you know, I try not to read the tea leaves too much in those things uh-huh. because uh, you can get yourself into trouble doing that. But uh, I was like, hmm, I think maybe he was he was insinuating that that there's something to be desired when it comes to that. Um, but in this game, to answer your question, mm. it was it was on. Like they went down 1-0, they they leveled it. They went down 2-1, they leveled it again. Um, that kind of backbone, the huevos um, that they showed in the game was was good. Uh, it was what you want to see. It's the kind of performance that, even though they didn't win, you, you kind of can walk out of the stadium with your head, head held head high. high. Yeah. Yeah. The Absolutely. posture of the fans is just a little uh, – everybody knows it's – like if we're playing uh, this way and dropping two points at home in uh, August, September, October, um, it's going to be a different story. But given the 400 minutes of goalless soccer that we just had to endure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This was yeah, disgusting. Yeah. This yeah. felt like an oasis in the desert is what it felt like. So. I, I agree. I, I tend to be a little more positive after this this game. And I, I think I think yeah, it was the best performance since, uh, yeah. since RSL away. I think this, is, this was it. Yeah. Um, and and Because uh, I think some of the tactics also helped. Some of the changes mm-hmm. on the rotation – on the the way they attacked the game, I think it was a little, a little different when they put Rigoni behind Drusi instead of Drusi behind Rigoni mm-hmm. on that on that side. So I think I think that made him made Rigoni think. I saw the analysis on Twitter somewhere that they said that Rigoni, because he changed position, he doesn't usually play on the left side. Yes, he usually exclusively throughout his career plays on the right. Mm-hmm. So now he he had to really kind of think about it. I think you're onto something there because I think I think instead of but we see him when he's on the right, it almost seems like he gets a little a little lazy over there. A he little. just can kind of cut in and just cross with his left foot, take bad shots with his left foot. I think playing on that opposite wing, he had to kind of think he about his think movement about a bit more. And I think the, the the goal was yeah, it was an excellent bit of movement to get into the box, get into that position to to actually make that finish. Um, I, and actually, we have a do we have the the wolf? Um, I asked, actually asked Wolf a question about this. Um, Rigoni playing on the. Can you go ahead and play that, Jerry? Okay, great. So yeah, I asked Wolf in the in the press conference about it. Is the left actually Rigoni's preferred position versus playing on the right? Okay, well, let's go for it. Yeah. For uh, Josh, um, this this two two uh, tastes like a victory for I think for everybody, but the reality we we need two points in April. Um, what is the positive we can we can have from April? Yeah, we got to keep getting better. I mean, ties don't do do much good at home. I think we were trying to obviously get Will in there at the end to, to stay aggressive. Um, you know, I think um, April is past now. We go into May. It's a busy schedule. Uh, we got Open Cup coming, so that's a, that's a you know certainly a competition that's extremely um, uh, rewarding. We we got to go into that with with everything we can, and and obviously um, know that the games are going to come thick and fast, and we just got to keep preparing and. Again, it's a performance to build off of. It was a performance worthy of three points. We, you know, we let uh, we let them off the hook, so to speak. Um, but if we can keep doing what we did tonight and and obviously clean up some of the defensive errors, I think um, you know we'll put ourselves in a good spot. We gotta we gotta win some games though. And uh, bringing two number nines and taking uh, uh, ring out, it was like uh, looking for. For the victory, yeah, I think so. I mean, we were trying to get him in there for a little while, and then the melee at the end. I I only think we played for like a minute. It didn't feel like we, had, I mean, it didn't feel like we were able to get the full four or five minutes that we were um talk you know that they illustrated or gave. But um yeah, the idea is to get you know Giassi's a box player is good good in front of goal, and and so is Will Bruin. So 
that was part of the idea. Um, you can do it a couple ways. Sometimes we'd move center backs up if we had Julio. That's that's certainly something that we would do. Leo possibly, but um, you know we had Will and we had an available sub and um, you know maybe a touch earlier if we we, we could have moved him in there quicker. Uh, yeah, coach. Just uh, in regards to Rigoni, um, do you think playing on the on the left might actually be a better fit for him? He's started there the last two games. Um, well, I think Diego's out, so it's it's also just trying to problem solve a little bit. Um, I'd say that's one area where we, we need to um, we need to add a player. I mean, you know, we need we need something that's a little more true over there. But Emmy's been great. Like I said, he played. We lined him as the right wing. We played him in the pocket as a, as an attack mid the first three three four games. And again, his expected goals assists were quite high. He had great opportunities. You know, even as a right wing, he's just when he's staying out wide, he's he's created opportunities. So I was glad to see him get rewarded. I think he again, you can see he's quite good with his left. He's quite good with his right. So he has some positional flexibility. And given that we don't have a you know another left wing, so to speak, we can always put Rodney over there. And Ethan's probably more preferred on the right. But um, We'll keep using them uh, in different spots. Again, the, the, the idea that these games will come, we'll need to move some guys around and, and obviously take stock of freshness. But really, really pleased for him to get on the board. He works incredibly hard, and um, you know, I'm sure he takes a lot of punishment because he hasn't scored enough goals. But um, he's a great dude, and he's, he's going he's gonna to continue to perform for us. Okay, right. so there's, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. There's some interesting stuff. I, I want to push back slightly against something Wolf, Wolf said there. Okay. Um, I didn't do it in the press conference because I value my, my press <laughs> credential. And I'd like to keep that. <laughs> but he, uh, he spoke about Rigoni having really good expected goals, expected assist numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, I, I big numbers guy. I, I looked up those numbers. And it was, it, to be fair, it was right after the game. So he probably had, didn't have it. Probably was not just, yeah, probably not on fbrough.com. A little biased, maybe. Yeah. Sure. But one thing I want to point out, we've discussed this on the show. So the, the first four games of the season, Rigoni had okay underlying expected goals, expected assist numbers. He had 0.9 XG, 1.1 expected goals assisted. So he had zero actual goals, zero actual assists. Yep. But even if we, if we say that, okay, he should have been performing up to what those numbers were, that's still one goal, one assist through four games. Right. That's not really that great, <laughs> to be honest. Really, no. And then if you look at the next four games after that, 0.3 XG, 0.3 expected goals assisted. That is very bad. He was pretty much no showing yeah, that the past. Just kind of standing the, yeah, 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 with this uh, this FCTV has, has done a lot of a big yeah, deep a dive lot, on, a lot of, a lot on of the uh, uh, Emiliano yeah, Rigoni a numbers. Lot of, a lot of so Rigoni I updates, I'm but, somewhat yeah. sympathetic that he started this season perhaps playing a little better than what he was getting credit for. Not exceptional and not up to the level of a designated player by any stretch. No. But he was not good for four straight games and no fancy smancy whatever Wolf's trying to sell there. I'm not buying it. He hasn't been good. Uh, glad he scored today, but or, or on uh, on Saturday. But yeah, the the underlying numbers were not as good as what Wolf was making them out to be. There. Yeah, uh, and, and that's why I said what about the celebration? It was a little critical about it because he needs consistency. He needs to consistently be good, not just one goal and then his career is saved. No, you <laughs> yeah, you, you got to be consistent <laughs> with 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 your production. Let's be honest about that goal. It, I like to call it the third times a charm goal. If you go back and rewatch the whole game, not just the highlights, um, that was the third time Roddy Reddish tried to make that cross. He did it twice with his foot, and then the mm-hmm. third time he tried it with the head, shorter distance. And really, uh, Jonathan Mensa kind of uh, didn't look good defensively on that one, and, no. and Emiliano Rigoni kind of capitalized it. But on the first two crosses, um, they got snuffed out. Um, and yep. if you go back and look at Roddy Reddish's <laughs> passing chart for the whole game, he, everyone's saying it's such a great game um, because of the assist, I guess. Um, but all of the rest of his crosses in the game never found their mark. Um, well. So, Mr. Statsman, uh, that's... <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> now, I, I, to me, what what I liked about Reddit's in this game, and look, I, when I'm saying I think he had the was, was the man of the match, I mean... There's not a, a ton of, of, of competition for that necessarily. <laughs> That's probably But true. what what I liked about Redis and what when with Redis playing on the right, what we we saw him do that we never see Ragoni do whenever he plays on the right is drive to the end line. Actually get in a position to send crosses in from more dangerous areas. Now were those crosses always coming off? Not necessarily, but hey, where, where, where's the Rudy? Where, where's Rigoni making those runs? You know, again, that, that's an issue of a player is not actually making those those deeper deeper runs like that. But I, I just like that Redis was willing to drive at the defense, 
stretch the defense is not something we've seen enough of, particularly on that side when Ragoni has started. To your point, um, overall performance, Rodney suffered for the badge. He suffered for the shirt and for the colors. Um, 100%. Yeah. I mean, you go back and watch, like, he got fouled, got kicked in the face. He's going to need an ice bath and ice packs. <laughs> yeah, he's going like, to need some, game. some medical for attention. Sure. For yeah. Sure. yeah, he yeah. he suffered for the team. And so, you know, hats off to you, Ronnie, for, for that. Um, I've seen some really harsh things publicly and privately about Rodney Reddish. I think a lot I, of us Rodney have. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Still waiting on that first goal. Still I'm not goal. yet ready to apologize. Um, and the, the critique I was making about the one uh, header finding its mark and leading to, leading to the first goal um, is because my overall critique over the body of Rodney Reddish's work over the whole, like, uh, two and a two and a third years now mm -hmm. has been that um, the ball goes to Rodney on the wing and he finds another way not to be productive with the ball. Um, that has been the Rodney Renna story up until uh, Saturday night. Thankfully, he might be finding a new chapter a in corner. that story. Hopefully. Um, does he hustle? Yeah, I think that's why he's still on the team because mm -hmm. coach likes his effort. Um, but I'm like, at what point is effort – like not enough, you know. This is a this is a professional football club um, in a major league. Like it's got to be more than just just effort, right? It's, yeah, it can't yeah. So it, it, it can't be just a feel good type of situation. Yeah, right? absolutely. Now it sounds like your opinion on Rodney Reddas has not fully changed based on on this match, Adam. It was one out of six crosses <laughs> that worked. <laughs> After two and a third season, I'm not used to nothing. someone else having numbers to like yeah, actually argue. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I'm not used to pushback. This, this, this is good stuff. I, I like this. But uh, but Jorge, was your opinion on Rodney Red has changed at all from from this performance? Is it the first time? I, I am I wrong? I think this might be his first assist in an MLS. Uh, I, game? I think it is. I think, yeah, so, and that, that's where I was headed. That. Just, just as much as I criticize Rigoni for, for celebrating because mm -hmm. of that one goal in his MLS career, we sh Rod Redis shouldn't really be celebrating his one assist in his MSL, MLS career. These two guys need to be consistent. They, they need to produce. And, and I think both of them may turn a corner with this game a little bit, but I need to see. I'll let you know in five games yeah. to see where they're at. I, I think I think that is that is more than fair there, Jorge. Yeah. So you kind of got to my next question. I mean, that's honestly that's why the Rigoni celebration was rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. You started so a lot of people have been talking about you, the celebration. Yeah, 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 it's it's really been, it's, I've been, I've been it done. showed up in the in the in the We Are Austin TV stuff and yeah, they're the, they're the they're all Twitter about spaces. that. Okay, the, the fan reaction stuff. I mean, and so yeah, but be, but be like okay, this goal. Um, sets us up for a home tie, which is better than a lot of what we've seen this year. Mm -hmm. But if you totaled up, like, how many shots he put right at the keeper, how many shots he didn't put weak sauce on the Always shot. goes right at the keeper. That, that's the thing that it, aggravates like, me more than anything. Does like, that. The body of work oh this, God, thus yeah. far this year, we're talking about Rigoni. Uh, I'm, I'm off of Redis. I'm going to leave him alone until... Um, <laughs> leave poor Rodney alone, yeah, man. Yeah, Come I'm going to leave him alone. Poor Roddy. He's making way more than I am. Um, <laughs> he actually is. I saw his salary. It's not yeah, good. He, he ain't hurting. Um, where were we? <laughs> Rigoni. 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 Uh, Rigoni, yeah. I mean, how many more points would we have in the standings if Rigoni was taking care of business up until this point? And then for him to be like, how do you like me now? Like <laughs> One goal in nine I'm, games, I'm like, dude. Yeah. Bro, no, that's, 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 some, that's not going to that's not gonna yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my opinion on Ragoni hasn't really changed after after this game. I didn't I didn't think he was going to go goalless for this entire season. Particularly if Wolf keeps starting him in every game, I thought eventually, you know, yep. rope clock finds the right time twice a day kind of thing. Like yeah. eventually you're going to trip over yourself and, and roll the ball yeah. into the net. Yeah, um, but yeah, we need to see more consistency. We, we need to see it. More goals, and then you can do the "How do you like me now?" Kind yeah, of celebration. If, if you if you if you want to be a productive, uh, if he starts to be a productive player, where he's consistently hustling, you know, a goal every couple games, or, you know, after five or six goals, okay, then you can bring out the celebration. 
But right now, there's a lot to be desired. Still. Yeah. Well, let me ask you guys Rigoni. this question here: Over or under ten goals for Rigoni this season? What do you think? Well, if we do the math, we're at what nine matches? Nine matches. He's got yeah, some work to do. Uh, 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 Thirty-seven. Gonna, I mean, that's a, that's yeah, a one yeah. goal per nine match ratio. Uh, <laughs> three and goals. Then we, and there's thirty-four games in the regular season. We're looking at three goals. Yeah, three goals. for the season. If if the pace the holds guys. true. The over under at five. Let's do over under at five. I'll say over. Over on give, five. Give him a little bit of confidence boost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, he's not short on confidence. No, 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 no. That, that is true. Is more that confidence. Is true. I think yeah, some, some humbling. That is true. Humility. Some, might, some I'm gonna, humility. No, I'm not going to lower the standard. What it needs to be ten goals produced, whether it's an assist or or that's what Ethan Finley gave from that same position from the right wing position. Yeah, five season. and five and five, and I I feel like it's not um, a failure of a season. Um, that's still, I, I, I agree. I that, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like that's, that's, that's getting a 70 in the class. Is yeah. Get that's above. Like, as a DP, that's still probably, you want more than five. Yeah. Five. You want more Absolutely. production out of your DP for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. A good season is, is something else, but, yeah. but five and five yeah. is a passable. Let's see. Well, Let's see. It's passable. I think, it's I think if word. he gets five and yeah. five, um, and Drew, does what he does and Diego comes back into form, we're in the playoffs. I, I agree. You know, yeah. um, I mean, not nine teams do to make the playoffs. This is, this if, is <laughs> only because be of that. Bad Otherwise, if, make, if it was make back to seven playoffs. like last season, I'd be forget it. We're, we're not right gonna, yeah, we're not going to. But look, that. in the same game, he uh, in the 56th minute, he had this comedy of errors. You can go back and watch it where him and uh, Rigoni like cross it in front of the, him and uh, Redis cross it in front of the keeper, and it comes to nothing. Um, and then in the, uh, I got my notes. I brought my receipts. Aye, this is, this is, yeah, I, mean, my, aye, I just, yeah, I um, love this. 85th minute is the one where he just skies it over the, I remember that specifically when, remember when that there specifically. was, there was space there for, uh, Zardes to maybe finally get his, you know, his first, first goal. goal. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so yeah, there was still, the, despite the goal, there was still some vintage Rigoni low lights in this in this performance. I think it, I think it's fair to but say. In some yeah. ways, I feel like that 85th minute one um, is somewhat on both because he looked like he was out of gas from like the 80th minute on, and and there was there was a sub to be made there. Um, I, I think that that's a valid point. Yeah, yeah I don't I'm not. Sure I would have liked him to push his son up onto the left wing to take his spot. And then again, put Cascante in in the in the middle and push Ring up um, to play side by side with Pereira. Uh, I think that yeah. could have generated that um, Ring with, with that, both. That, that's what I'm waiting for yeah. to happen. That's what I'm waiting for to happen. Anybody, any healthy cornerback, a center back to be available, throw him in there to move Ring up. Yeah. But, I 100 percent agree. Exactly, but to your point about um, what impressed you about Redis was that he was able to like you know um, hustle all the way to the end line, which Rigoni wasn't doing. Um, Owen could do that. Like he, he's got the he youth and the athleticism. Mm -hmm. At that point, we're in the 80th minute. Uh, Rigoni's out of gas. He, yeah. he, he may not have even seen Zardes because he was just had like kind of that uh, out of gas tunnel vision kind yeah. of thing going on. Um, just so confident after scoring the goal, he, just <laughs> he wanted another one. <laughs> he said, "I, I got this." Which is really guy. what you I want. Think, was really it that or was he tired of running? <laughs> I think it's probably, probably a bit of both. I think a little bit fair. of both, yeah. Now, an interesting thing from the, the what the, we just heard from, from Josh Wolf, and I was kind of surprised, he dropped this little nugget that we need to add a player when talking about Austin FC's wing options. And it was interesting because most of that whole press conference, the vibe was, oh, Rigoni's so great, he finally scored. Redis was so great, had the assist. So I found it interesting that he was saying, we need to add a player, and, and the, the next transfer window doesn't open up till July. July 5th is when the, the secondary MLS transfer window opens up, by, by which point I would assume Diego Fagundes should be back. So you would have, at that point, four wingers for, for two positions. And you also have a John Gallagher who's playing fullback but, but can play, play on the wing as well. So right. really kind of five options for, for two positions on the wing. Do, do you guys think that, that Austin FC need to add a, a, a wing player? Is that something, an area you would look to strengthen? I'd rather see um, him pull somebody from Austin FC two first. Mm. Is there anyone? I know you were at the game uh, with me, Adam. Is there anyone on that team that would jump out at you as, as being a guy that could get the call up? Um, I'd like to see Fodry. Okay. Um, you know, we traded up to get him in the draft. He's played in the USL simultaneously while he was doing his college ball in San Diego, at, right? At San Diego yeah. State. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, so he has some pro level experience. 
He's looked good for Austin FC too. He's on a first team contract, so we don't have to mess with our um, salary structures mm-hmm. or anything like that. I think he's a generation Adidas, so he doesn't even count towards the cap. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one. Um, the other thing that I'm really confused about is we got three strikers all over the age of 30 uh-huh. that have produced one goal. Mm-hmm. They all kind of fit the tall, lanky profile, and a lot of the strikers we have are more of the shifty, short guy kind of stuff. And I'm like, is there like a, a wolf profile for, <laughs> yeah. for how a striker has to be in order to get goals? Because you look at the history of football or soccer, whatever, like that is not the case. Like anybody can score a goal with any kind of body type. Yes. And generally soccer is a young man sport, not a wrong side of 30 man sport, especially – um, in one of the most ath- athletically challenging positions on the field, that of striker, where you got to physically beat the man in front of you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that is an interesting point. I, I actually did have a, a question lined up about Austin FC strikers, and yeah, that that stat you said one goal between the three of them so far this season. What do you guys think the ceiling for this team is if Austin FC can't get at least ten goals? From their strikers, like because I'm I'm a little concerned that we might be headed towards Austin FC not getting ten goals from their their strikers. Is that did is we get ten last year? I think we did. Between Gita uh, and Arudi, yeah, we, and there Houston was had a couple. Yeah, had and a Houston couple. had a couple as well. So and yeah, we're on, on pace for that same three that Rigoni is on pace for from Austin FC strikers. Yeah, be, before the season, I had really really high hopes for. Hopes for us artists. Yeah, I, I did too. I and absolutely did. Unfortunately, those those, are, those plans have been thwarted. So uh, I, I really thought he would get 15 goals. I really I really did. I thought he would get close. Yeah. I, I don't think that anymore. Uh, like based on the production, uh, some of the changes on the on the injuries and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, and I can't remember if it was Matt Doyle or somebody at MLS. Like they they looked at how much his XG dropped off from. Last year to this year, it's, he's running like 0.25 xG for the season right now. Or something like that. Wow! Yeah, it's, but he hasn't it's, had a ton pretty, of opportunities. At least as, as of late, he's not had a lot. Yeah, of he's 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 coming as a substitute, but I don't really think Zard is as a substitute type player. He needs he needs some time to get into the rhythm of the game. So by the time you use him as a substitute, he he runs out of time. By the time he get he gets pretty good, and so it, you know he doesn't have the those five ten minutes of. Of opportunities, especially for a guy that's still, you know, probably trying to adapt to this system to just be getting these like twenty-minute cameos. It's no, probably not going to cut. It's not going to cut. It. He played in Wolf system under Burhalter for Columbus. His most productive years ever were in the system. That's the whole reason why we're sold on him in the off season. Yeah. So what, what do you think? Is that he was a guy who was already it? familiar with Wolf ball. I I I one hundred percent agree that that should Sorry, be the I just case. Couldn't let you have that but one. No, but I I agree that that should be the case. But from what you've seen of him, does he look like a guy who's comfortable in the system? I don't think it's I don't think it's that. I think he's just he, every time I've seen him get a run out, he looks a step slow. So you think it's more of a fitness concern, uh, or age, it's an age maybe. thing? An age, yeah, because he's thirty one. I think. I think. Yeah, yeah I think thirty one. Yeah, yeah, he's thirty one. So, and he's been. He came into the league young, so sometimes these guys come in um, got a lot of through, miles through the super draft, That's right? Um, yeah. In fact, if you want a, a real deep cut, go back and watch his acceptance speech in the super draft as an 18 year older. It's the funniest 18 year old yeah. moment ever, <laughs> and I will not let him live it down. <laughs> I'll have to uh, look that one up. Oh man, it's it's freaking hilarious. Uh, and I'm sure uh, people in his family uh, yeah, don't so don't let him forget that. about okay. it. <laughs> but I was there. I was watching the Super Draft live that day, and I was like, almost, you know, to the spit <laughs> take. I was like, that that fool said what? Uh, it's it's quite hilarious. Um, so he's been doing it as a pro since he was 18. Mm. So it's not That's like one 12, of the guys that like does now. four years like. Yeah. The thing about college soccer in the United States is they have notoriously short schedules. And so mm-hmm. a lot of MLS yeah. coaches have really bemoaned over the yes. years, like these guys don't get enough reps to really develop in the college game, um, which is why um, MLS as a whole is invested so heavily in the academy system mm-hmm. like every other soccer club on the planet. Um, so, uh, yeah, so he's got more miles on him than maybe other uh, American strikers at 31 years of age is what I'm saying. 
Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, so just, just kind of back to the original question, like because it, it sounds like we're all perhaps our expectations for Zardes have, have dropped from where they may, may have been yeah. initially coming into this season. For various reasons. I yeah, think. If, if Austin FC aren't going to get 10 goals from these three aging strikers, what, what's the best we can hope for? Can they still make the playoffs? Can, can they win a playoff game? Well, like, where, 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 I mean, what's the ceiling? Austin FC 2 is there for a reason. And and from what I understand, they're both using the same system, the yeah. same tactics, same everything. So who's producing in Austin FC 2? Valentin Noel. I'm, 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 they did call him up. I don't know why they haven't used him yet, but in lieu of, of uh, Jafal's uh, unfortunate injury, give the kid a shot. Give Noel a shot. I mean, he's, he's been producing Austin FC too. He's young. He's got the quickness to him. Uh, same with Fod, Fodre, I think. Uh, so give those two guys a couple of minutes here and there and see what they can do. Another one would be uh, David Rodriguez. David uh, Rodriguez, yes, yeah. Yes. Who we poached from the Dallas system. Um, good system. Good system to poach from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's all right. <laughs> and he's looked good. He's looked dangerous. He scored with the first team in preseason against, uh, I think, our last um, preseason game against Miami. Um, when asked, when I've asked Coach about, like, who, who do you like on the Austin FC2 um, team, uh David Rodriguez's name was one of the first names out of his mouth. Um, so he's got, he's seen him, you know, he's, he sees the upside. He sees the potential. Um, I just, maybe Coach Wolf is a, a bit risk averse. I don't know. Um, it does seem like new new players, and maybe this goes into the Austin FC2 thing as well, seems like it takes Wolf a while to really to warm up to them. a yeah. player, someone new coming into to his system. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's exactly what it what it feels like. And anytime there's and a I new think, signing, and it, I think always, it, it, it always it it always I think it. You know, I don't want to say nepotism, but um, <laughs> other than than Wolf, uh-huh. he seems to prefer veteran players uh, because yeah. he's got the, the he could have gone for anybody in the off season, and he went for his artist, thinking that he was prepared, that he was you know, and Will Bruin and as Will well. Bruin as well. There, those those guys are up there now. <laughs> And so but to Bruin. get to get an 18, 19, 20 year old kid as a forward, like other teams do, I don't think that's that's just what system. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I I've watched Will Bruin since he was a rookie. Um, with Seattle. With Houston Dynamo. Go <laughs> no, way back. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, I've always been a big Will Bruin fan. And um, when you Walk by the guy in the tunnel after the game. The guy's jacked. He looks like yeah. a, a physical specimen. You think he's, he's still got it? Um, well, he well he hasn't been given. Got chances. it. He hasn't scored yet for us. Uh, he's not not featured that much. Though. Not, he's he's not featured that much. Um, I I honestly don't know. The, the The thing is, he 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 was a trialist during preseason. He he was yeah. a walk on to our team. Mm. So they obviously saw something of him. Um, maybe the price was right. I don't know. Um, but uh, if that was a factor, but uh, um, nothing to write home about yet thus far. Unfortunately, I please prove me wrong, Will. Please, uh, someone, someone at, at Striker needs to, to prove be, us wrong. Because, because if I recall, it's not a uh, spot from, right from now. the se- from the from last season, I had doubts about Ethan Finley. Now I'm all, all about Ethan Finley now because I thought he would. Was was not the right fit, mm-hmm. and he proved me totally wrong. And no, I'm yeah. clamoring for him to start. So I think Will Bruin is a little bit like that. I I would, if if they're gonna twiddle around with with Uruti versus Sardis, throw Will Bruin in there for. Her. Heck, even throw him in for the for the U.S. Open match against New Mexico. That Madrid. that'll be an interesting lineup. The, the New Mexico because because May is gonna yes. be packed. They have six games. scheduled games. Plus the U.S. Open. Plus, if they win that game, they'll play another game. So potentially eight games in. And I'll tell you what, I, I am That's concerned because like, this team is. I don't think it's quite as deep as we may have initially thought before no, the season. No, it, not it's anymore. Really, yeah, it's it, it's not looking great. Okay, we're, we're getting short on time here, so I want to get some predictions. Let me let me answer your question real quick. Maximiliano Ruti had like. Uh, I don't know how many game-winning goals last year, and then Gite yeah, had uh, that one game. The hat trick against RSL that was a great that one. was essentially that was. A, a game-winning goal. So 
you know, you're talking five uh, W's that turn into L's um, without that kind of production from the number nine position. So what uh, do you, is this still a playoff team without 10, at least 10 goals from its strikers? Well, you're talking about taking 15 points off the top of the, the standings if we if we those mm-hmm. five wins from last year end up being L's this year. Mm-hmm. So it looks bleak if yeah, we don't get production be, from the nine position. Yeah, yeah I, I 100% agree. Yep. Um, okay, so Portland... Saturday, 9.30, Austin FC on the road. That's a wild place, Portland. That's one of my, one of my favorite <laughs> favorite places, nuts, stadiums yeah. to, to nuts watch a game. Um, let's get some predictions. Now, you're the guest, Adam. We're going to start with you. I, I must of warn course. you. So what, what you have sitting right behind you is the Football in Vivo Chicken of Indecisiveness. So if you, if you try and pick something like a draw, something like that, that chicken is going to just stare a hole straight into the back of your head. The chicken of indecisiveness looks down scornfully on people that don't bring hot takes. Yes. So we want, we want a strong opinion from here. You've been great all show, so don't let us down here at the end <laughs> with a wishy-washy opinion on who's going to win Austin FC against Portland. You told me we're coming here to talk about San Jose today. <laughs> well, hey. I, I, we, that was pretty that decisive. Was, that was the but. first 57 minutes of the show. The final three, we, we yeah. talk a little Portland. Uh, yeah. Portland is coming off of a victory in what has been a fortress thus far, uh, St. Louis. Yes, that was an impressive, um, impressive, impressive win. Impressive win, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we have yet to ever win in Portland. Um, yes, yes, correct. And generally, it doesn't feel like we play great on turf. No. Um, the debacle in the Dominican, for example. <laughs> if you're having a drinking game at home <laughs> yeah. for how many times I say debacle, <laughs> there, you, you're having a good night. Um, yeah, man, uh, I, don't think we, I don't think we come out of this one with the W. Okay. Uh, which hurts my very day heart to say that. Um, but, yeah, I, I think we're, we're going to – Going to give all three points to Portland. Okay. Do you have Do you have a score line you'd like to throw out there? Mm, I would really love for it to be respectful, or respectable <laughs> at the end of the day. So let's say two one. Okay, that's another goal. That's a that that's, seems some, to be all it takes to get some positive vibes going. Is just a a goal. Yeah, yeah and most desperate times, I suppose. And surprisingly. Not close for the win, probably. <laughs> yeah, for, that, that's a for pretty Portland. Sizably uh, in favor of Portland. Yeah, there. a little, uh, little bit. Um, how do you see this one going? 2 0 Portland. 2 0 Portland? Yeah. I they're, think it's the whole we're the trees and they're the axe thing that just kind yeah. of. Ah, oh, yes. A little bit of yeah, a, yeah, our, our uh, so. mortal enemies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. the timbers. Yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> the yeah, lumberjacks we, going after us. Yeah, so I, 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 I really don't see. Uh, I think I say this every game. It depends on the lineup. If, if the lineup is going to be a little bit similar to what we have now, maybe maybe move up a ring for a Valencia and have one of the regular center backs. Mm. I, I really hope that then, happens. Then they have a much better shot. Mm. But as it is now, if they start the same lineup, they're going to lose 2-0. Yeah. I just think Portland's confidence is at an all-time high, and ours is kind of like it, – it should it's be starting grow- to, should it's be through starting the roof. to go should be the rest of the bit, team. But, but now that so. I'm thinking about it even more, like they destroyed Seattle at home. They and did. Then they followed that up by going into the belly of the beast in, in, in St. Louis and, and doing it again. So they're riding they're, away. They're, they're right riding away. The yeah, they've, they've really hit yeah. their stride. Yeah. I, I'm with you guys. I, I don't think this will be a good a good time for Austin no. FC fans. I – yeah, I two nil sounds about right to me. Two right? nil sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. So well, hey, it's it's been a ton of fun here this week, Adam. Yes. Thank you for joining Absolutely. us. Really, really appreciate it. Great analysis. Um, check out Adam on uh, Capital City Soccer. Read his stuff. Follow him on Twitter. What what's your uh, Twitter handle, Adam? For our, uh, our fans Ribbonator. Out there? The Ribbonator. That's right. Yeah, the Ribbonator. Follow the Ribbonator. He's great. Lots of good takes during the games. Uh, it's been fun. Thank you to our fans. Thank you to Jerry Lopez. As always, working the boards like a professional. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.